So here we have a temp master, and the problem is the compressors keep running even though we stop calling them. So I've traced the, the compressor calls from the controller split in two. Uh, one leg does the liquid line solenoid valve. The other leg comes up here, and you can see I've cut the orange and the white. The orange was stage one, so this, this comes up from the controller, and it goes to S1 down there. The other one goes to S3, so Y2 goes to S3. Um, so then I'm looking at this diagram, and, I'm, and I figured out, so I'm, my controller stops calling for cooling, but the cooling still runs. And I notice I've got 24 volts coming from somewhere, so I start digging into it and trying to figure out where it's coming from. So I trace the wires up here, and they go to S1 and S3. So here's S1, it gets its power from a dry contact on the relay R, RY1, yeah. And then S3 is the same, th same thing on RY3. And if you trace it back, it comes from the pump out relay. So there's a dry contact on the pump out relay, and then it comes from the transformer. So the pump out relay can feed the RY1 relay, which can back feed 24 volts down to my thermostat. It also can come down here and do hot gas bypass. You've also got dry contacts on RY2, which is basically the compressor relay, and RY4, which I think again is a compressor relay. And you can see those down here. RY1, the coil for RY1 is there and it comes from compressor one. And it also goes up to that, which is having to do with compressor one. And the same compressor two, compressor relay two, compressor two. So anytime the compressor is enabled, the RY1 relay is enabled, it makes the dry contact for RY1, sending 24 volts on S1. It can go to the hot gas bypass enable, and it also feed, it also back feeds down to our controller where it was tied in with the liquid line solenoid. So I feel like that's a mistake. The way it's supposed to happen, you have your calls come up on uh, two wires on in our case it's yellow for first stage and brown for second stage and they go into these terminals so those are your calls so your calls come up and then the board makes a decision and sends a signal back down to the liquid line solenoid when it wants it to open and uh, based on what the board wants and what this pump down pump out relay is doing the liquid line solenoid is either open or closed so that all makes sense, but what happened was the control company that was here before us tied in S1 and S3 with the Y1 and Y2 calls. So as soon as you had a call for Y1 from your controller, the call comes up to the board. The board says, oh, I need to turn on S1 and S3 so that I can get my stages of cooling going and then S1 and S3 go down and keep the liquid line solenoid valves open and also back feed back into these thermostat terminals, these Y terminals. So you have like a death loop. So as soon as you engage it, it never shuts off. And uh, that's what we were experiencing. The, the coils would freeze and uh, we'd go and we'd get low, low pressure alarms down at the controller I've disconnected the the orange wire from the yellow wire basically from the Y terminal and the white wire from the Y2 terminal so that you send a call up the board makes a decision brings on the liquid line solenoid and uh, it can time its own liquid line solenoid just in case there's some sort of a delay that I don't know about uh, and now it works okay so here it is on the diagram you can see Y1 coming up from the controller and then S1 engages, comes back down to the liquid line solenoid on its own timing based on the pump out relay. And then that all works great. What you don't wanna do 
is connect them together because then you have a loop that just keeps itself going and the cooling never shuts off.